Hello there, South by Southwest. Welcome to day three of our IBL Expert Showcase. It's your old pal, Sean. <laughs> and today, I'm here with my new pal, Jennifer. Hey, Sean. And welcome. Hey, Good morning. Thanks. Welcome. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Thanks. Uh, Jennifer, we're going to talk about uh, inclusion mm -hmm. and leadership in the workspace. Mm -hmm. And I also want to get into, you had a panel at South by yesterday, and you've got a book that's being re-released. Right. So we've got a lot to cover here real quick. So let's just dive in. Tell us about you. Tell us about how you got in this space and how you got passionate about this and all the good things. I have so much passion about it. Um, I've been working on inclusive leadership in the workplace for over almost 20 years. Yeah. Um, I came out um, in my early 20s, a member of the LGBTQ plus community, and um, initially it was personal, right? Yeah. It was sort of a yeah, yeah. fear of being in the closet and sure. the pressure in the workplace of not bringing our full selves to work. Sure. And then realizing, wait, this is something that's really commonly and universally experienced yeah. on a whole variety of identities. And then and then deciding to step in, I had a degree in uh, HR and also a music degree. So oh, I'm, a, I'm a performer. You're a renaissance. Yeah, and, but it's all become helpful. Sure. But, you know, because it's Start like, tying it together. yeah, and now I keynote for a living. So I get to be on the stage just yeah. in a different way. Sure. And I also get to use my voice, yeah. which is not as a singer. Um, and um, I'm just really passionate about a workplace that works for all of us sure. and the way that we all don't do our best work when we don't feel a sense of belonging yeah, and all the ways that bias gets in our way sure. and what leaders can do um, of different identities. Like even if you are a certain identity and you're like, well, I don't know what this means. Yeah. It's still very important that you take it on. And that's why I wrote this particular book. It's like yeah. how to, cause I, I want to answer the question. I don't know what Jennifer, I don't know what to do. And yeah. I'm afraid to do something. It's not enough. <laughs> right. Right. You're giving some practical steps here. Yeah. So for someone, let's say like I'm, you know, an executive and I'm trying to get better and I'm trying to be more mindful about raising up the next generation and being inclusive. Mm -hmm. What are some, some practical steps I can take mm -hmm. to be more mindful and, and champion that? Yeah. I think, um, humility around, mm -hmm. look, I don't know what I don't know. Sure. And being really open about that. Yeah. I'm learning. I'm, I'm going to try new language. I mean, we, it's incumbent on all of us to educate ourselves sure. really about lived experiences that aren't our own. Yeah. Um, we need to diversify the people we hang out with and hire and work, you know, work with, sure. socialize with, because that there's not, there's a book, there's book learning and then there's knowing someone sure. in a community. Yeah. That's um, a good point. so powerful. So, um, but, but be the learner, yeah. do a little something every day and then also recognize any privileges you have. I think mm -hmm. that it's gotten a bad name, this word. But I'm LGBTQ plus and female, but I have privileges also, yeah. like yeah. how I was raised, my socioeconomic sure. background, my the education I had the opportunity to access, the color of my skin. So I'm very open about that too, and saying, so what can I do? How can I use that There's to shift a platform that you can outcomes? Use. Exactly. Yeah. So if we yeah, could talk yeah. about it that way, sure. it wouldn't be so threatening. Yeah. But right now, people are a bit um, defensive on that yeah. word, and that's the wrong. That's the wrong sure. way to look at it. Sure. No, that's a really good point. And I, I, I like that you said that. How, how do you think we can work as a whole to maybe change the connotation or change the stigma of privilege yeah. and, and, and get people comfortable like, hey, this is an opportunity yeah. to help the people around you. Yeah. I mean, I think we have to stop shaming people yeah. and saying you have nothing to contribute because yeah. that's never true. And then I think we need to invite and then equip people with yeah. an understanding of, oh, that's what you mean. Oh, that's what I can do. Yeah. Oh, that's what allyship looks like yeah. and sounds like. Like that's what that's where our focus should be, sure. because we can't afford to lose any contributors. Right. Because the work ahead is really big. It's gonna take a team. It's complex, yeah. and we need those. Also, by the way, with power, those with influence. And in most organizations I consult to, there's not a lot of diversity yeah. of certain kinds at the top. Yeah. So we, but those are the folks that can shift things totally. so quickly 100%. and so easily without a lot of risk. So yeah. I think we should put some love and some support there and some encouragement sure. and some accountability. Um, but yeah, then we just need to keep using our voices also. Like those that. of us who have experienced a toxic workplace need to use our voice yeah. to challenge, to be, tell the truth, to, um, and push, because I think there's a readiness here yeah. that if we do the right thing now, we can sure. shift the workplace for the better. Yeah. But this opening feels very like it's a moment in time. That I think we there's have. a lot of people just like looking to see who else is going to step forward. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, people are definitely, yeah. um, it, it's their strength in numbers and, totally. and sort of, um, but the critical mass piece is what I'm always trying to get to, which is yeah. like, well, if they're doing it, then I can do it. Right. And I think when we step forward and role model what this looks sure. like, it makes it safe for others to say, oh, I could do that. Yeah. 
hundred yeah. percent. And that's, that's, that's so empowering. That's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, the panel, you had it yesterday. Yeah. Uh, talked about like, what, what's, so you amazing. know, what are some of the highlights you think people maybe hopefully walked away with a better understanding of? Yeah, it was, um, Denise moderated. She's incredible. She's a big star on clubhouse and interviewed Oprah. Oh, so cool. she moderated. And then we had, um, uh, um, I'm going to forget her name, but she is a black woman VC, like a really established um, leader in that space, really unusual. And so speaking from that perspective, like you talk about being the first, yeah. you know, and one of the only and pushing through that, it was incredible. And then we had somebody who leads her own PR firm and deals with a lot of companies in crisis around oh, wow. reputation and yeah. DEI. So the four of us were just really complimentary. We just wow. like presented not answers, but different ways of looking at sure. these, different these persistent points. problems. And I think the big question probably we focused on was like, is change happening fast enough? Like, what do we need to do to keep keep the urgency? Because sure. I think after the murder of George Floyd, mm -hmm. there was a huge crescendo. And then we're two years, almost two years later, and we're worried in, a, in my world that the attention and the urgency is changing and there's the short attention span of our world. And people are, and companies are sort of like, well, what about, I have to go put attention here, et cetera. Yeah. And, um, but we know that this is a crisis. It's not going right. away just right. because our attention span has moved on. So yeah. um, anyway, I, I think we all are like, how do we, how do we have this conversation differently, motivate people to understand that like, this is the future. Sure. This is not a nice to have. Yeah. This is not it's, something that somebody else takes care of for you. Like I have an opportunity to be a better leader, better human, better parent. Um, it's all around us. It's yeah. like, but to step in, I just want more people to step in and see that this it's far from being kind of a chore or I'm going to check the box. It's like this opportunity to evolve yeah. and, and to meet the future truly. Okay. And which one among us can afford to not really think about ourselves right. that way? Right. No, I, I think that's really well said. And, <clears> and it, <throat> it's, it's urgent. It's upon us now, mm. and I think we're seeing that, and we're seeing a, a lot of areas where people have just been hurt at the lack of opportunity for representation or the opportunity to, to have a seat at the table, and, and how how empowering it is when you have people who, you know, understand that, like, hey, I, yes, my dad worked hard, but there were other people who also worked really hard and didn't, didn't get, get the, the same opportunities. Exactly. And so it doesn't mean that, hey, you didn't deserve to, like, have a shot, but this person deserved a shot, too. And so how can we give them an opportunity to, to succeed? That's right. So I love that you're, you're championing that space. I mean, without the complete contributions of all yeah. kinds of people, I don't think we'll be able to innovate right. properly right. and as deeply, right? Right, Because you're just going to have that homogeneity repeating itself. Totally. And those decisions, those products, those mm -hmm. the inability to understand and see where your customer is going. Because by the way, the world is diversifying, but companies, particularly leadership and companies, are lagging behind. They don't look like that world. Oh, well, my guess. It's a problem. Yes. It's a liability, actually. Yeah. And to say that that's not a huge business risk right. is completely putting your head in the sand. 100%. Yeah. No, I, it, it, hopefully, do you feel, do you have optimism? Do you feel like maybe there's a shift happening here? Please give me some hope. I know, I know. Yeah, I've been yeah. doing this a long time. Uh, well, at least I like to say we're, we're focusing now on the how, not the why, which yeah. I think is progress. Yeah. Um, and I think where people are stuck now is I want to do more, Jennifer, yeah. but like I don't know what that looks like or sounds yeah. like, and I'm afraid I'm going to get it wrong. Yeah. I'd rather deal with that than defending the why, which sure. is what I feel like I've done for so many years and so many of us have done. So the how is really, um, I just think we then need to simplify yeah. and make it real clear and really actionable and yeah. not about shame and blame sure. because I don't think people learn and act from a place of shame. Yeah. It's just impossible to do anything. Mm. So we have to encourage, you know, and I think we have to hold some space for quote unquote mistakes, which yeah, I would call good. learning opportunities. Yeah. And we're all going to stumble. We're all going to be figuring it out. Sure. We're works in progress. So I think if we can normalize yeah. the, we are works in progress conversation That's and good. give each other the grace and space to get feedback and adjust and try again yeah. without the drama. That's huge. It's so important. I mean, we're all, what am, who among us has all the answers? Yeah, like, I, I mean, so I don't think we should get on our high horse and be yeah. too judgy. I think that's wonderful. <laughs> and, and, and God bless you for, for doing this for as long as you have and not being, I mean, I'm sure you're tired, but not mm. losing spirit and mm. still fighting the good fight. That's awesome. And, I just, the, vo the, the voiceless in organizations, yeah. it just breaks my heart that yeah. people don't feel 
that psychological safety to create, sure. to do their most brilliant work. Yeah. And that was me, yeah. you know, and I, I don't think we ever forget what that felt like. Sure. And that I became an entrepreneur so that I could control uh, my destiny yeah. and I had agency yeah. that I didn't feel like I had in the organiza organizational context. And so that was the way I solved that problem. Sure. But, but guess what? Big companies are in a big world of hurt if yeah. We keep leaving yeah, totally. because we are experiencing microaggressions every day. We're yeah. not we're not understood. We're not seen. It's exhausting yeah. and um, it's diminishing to our sense of self. So I think, sure. you know, I I just want not everybody can afford to be an entrepreneur. Right. You know, I mean, right. a job is still a job for most folks. Sure. So I really want to keep the pressure on these employers to be better and do better as you should and as they should and, and, and hopefully I mean I, I'm sure there's also a really rewarding moment there when people mm -hmm. have those opportunities that otherwise they wouldn't have and you see those dots connect and it may be I don't know maybe even see some moments where like the, the old guard kind of realizes like oh yeah. that's what this is and like I've been missing it do you ever have moments like totally. that? Totally. Okay. Oh yeah, the aha moments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The um, you know, thank yous around. Oh, that really made sense to me, or I hadn't thought about it that way, or your story really moved me, yeah. or my, or the kid, the parent coming up to me and saying, my kid sure. is transitioning, yeah. or whatever, or has shared this about yeah. their identity with me, and I didn't know what to do, and you've really helped me. Wow. Kind that's of powerful. ground myself in my relationship with my family yeah. members, like. That's when those are the times when it like Preserving definitely relationships. gets bigger. Yeah, That's so for me. Huge. That's yeah, awesome. it's great. And then to be role modeling what this looks like, like me in this body sure. and this, these identities and being brave. Yeah. Um, and even the bravery sometimes isn't easy for me. I mean, I sometimes still feel threatened. Yeah. You know, I'm a woman in a male dominated yeah. executive world, which is where I spend most of my time. Sure. And I walk in and I definitely feel that old feeling. You know, and I think, um, but then I realized, wait a second, I'm the expert. I'm here. They yeah, need to hear from me. Yeah, they need yeah. to learn totally. from me. 100%. And um, I'm helping them be more effective at their job. And um, but, but it took many years to kind of wrestle that sense of I am being diminished. I am being, um, you know, assigned less credibility yeah. right now before I even say anything. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's a feeling that I carry with me. And um, if I can change that... That'd be an incredible legacy. Hundred yeah. percent. Well, I'm sure you are changing that in ways yeah. that you probably do realize in ways that you don't realize. And so, yeah. you know, thank you for yeah. doing the work that you're doing. God bless you. And again, the book is How to Be an Inclusive Leader, uh, and it's a 2019 book. But just to remind everybody, the second edition is coming out in October. In October of 2022, and I literally kind of rewrote it. So really? this is no. Like small feet. Okay, this is you. <laughs> it this is, is your really the, yes, because okay. the last four years have a lot changed, has changed all of us. Yeah, so hugely, okay. and uh, it just didn't feel um, up to, as as relevant as I wanted it to. All right, well, I am excited to see it. Uh, thanks for being here during South by. Thanks for connecting with Ibel. Uh, uh, just real quick. Uh, from one theater choir kid to another. What vocal part were you? Uh, soprano. I you were a tenor? I was, yeah, I was definitely a tenor. I had very high voice. <laughs> uh, thank you for taking the time to be with us, Jennifer. Really appreciate thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, you bet. Thanks, Ibel. Go give her some love. <laughs>